Well, boys, the time has come to talk more about these really exotic, super abrasive bonded stones, isn't it? But in order to really appreciate and understand why these even exist, you have to understand the limits of the coated abrasives that were on the market, okay? So we have the coated abrasives here, DMT, Atoma. We have the metallic bonded stones from Gridomatic. Here's some vitrified prototypes made by me. Here's my CBN resin bonded stones. And then Nanowall resin bond, Veneve resin bonded. We'll get into the details comparing metallic, vitrified, and resin in a later episode that's going to be a lot more of a lengthy uh, video but for now in order to kind of understand the difference between the bonded stuff and the coated stuff we have to understand the limitations of these coated abrasives that are on the market okay so this right here is a dmt all right this is a continuous plate right here and i'm not trying to pick on dmt they offer you a great stone for a great price okay but there's limitations to it okay these diamonds that are coated on the surface is a single layer of diamond once it strips out or wears away the stone is garbage and you throw it away, okay? So the diamonds are adhered to a film. The film is then adhered to this plate right here, and over time, it starts to delaminate from the plate, okay? That's what these chip things are from, They're just delaminating from the plate there. Another option that the DMTs offer is this interrupted surface right here, and the idea is that these little interrupted uh, dots right here would collect the metal filings and keep the stone cutting faster. In practice, though, it just gives you less diamond, so that's not ideal either, and still has the tear-out issues. Both of the coated abrasives, even though the Atomas are more of the Cadillac, still has tear-out issues. You're supposed to be using them with light pressure. It doesn't matter, though, because it'll tear out faster. And if you're using these guys with light pressure, then hands down, these other stones cut much, much faster because they don't have the tear-out issues that the coated abrasives do. All right, so the idea with the Atomas is that they have these little dots, and each of these individual dots is going to be a cluster of diamond, and it's adhered to this plate. These plates are actually removable. You can either buy the plate with the base, or you can buy replacement plates, but the replacement plates are just as expensive as the ones with the base. You can see right there that's actually adhered to that uh, top layer of metal. So another disadvantage to these diamond abrasives that are coated is the fact that because that grain, that diamond abrasive grain, is poking up and it's not bonded to anything, it's allowed to fully penetrate into that bevel, and it gives a very, very deep, aggressive cut. Some people like that when they're making kind of very aggressive salt blade type edges and really high carbide volume steels, but at the same time, it has a disadvantage in that if you're going to higher grit or looking for a more refined apex that you're going to finish out at higher grit, these deep scratches set you back way back. You have to spend more time on another stone to then clean out the scratches that you have on these guys right here. So that's kind of the advantage, I guess, and disadvantage of having a coated abrasive. Uh, one of the big advantages of these coated abrasives is they're a lot more affordable than all these more exotic bonded abrasives that we see over here that we'll get into in a later uh, video. But these guys can cost anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks, which for some people, that's kind of their price range, okay? And if you're not doing a lot of sharpening, then yeah, these coated guys will work fine for you, okay? If you do enough sharpening though, that adds up because these guys wear out very, very fast if you do a lot of sharpening. If you're a professional knife sharpener, you can't get through a week with these guys. They just really lose that aggressiveness very, very fast. With these guys, it's just better value for your money. So at the end of the day, the bonded stones can offer you more value for your money and at the same time give you more of what you're looking for depending on what kind of edge finish you're looking for, okay? But there's just a lot more longevity to these stones right here. Now, as far as the difference between resin bonded stones, vitrified bonded stone, and metallic bonded stone, that's going to have to be for another video because that's actually going to be a very lengthy discussion, all right? Now, the resin bonded stones have been around for a really, really long time as far as for the past few years, all right? The vitrified and the metallic bonds are actually a lot newer to the market, and they're also going to be a lot more expensive than these resin bonded stones. And we'll get into the reasons why and some of the advantages and disadvantages of these stones in another video, all right? So thanks for staying tuned. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys watching. And uh, if your DMT is this worn out, just toss it away. <laughs>